Hello guys, it's WezzyTZK and today I'm going to be going over 20 tips and tricks for Kidding Floor 2 to help you improve at your game, help you survive better against the Zeds and just a couple of tricks that help make the game a bit easier for you whether you're a new player or you're looking to improve your Kidding Floor skills. A few months ago I did a similar video where I discussed the best way to level up quickly in Kidding Floor 2 and so I decided to follow it up with a tips and tricks video because let's face it you can't level up without having to survive in Kidding Floor 2 so survival is obviously going to be the number one priority so I decided to compile 20 tips and tricks to help you survive. So starting off with number one, each perk has their XP objectives. If you look at Commando for example, one of the objectives is to kill stalkers with commando weapons because commando can see stalkers. They can also see cloaked bosses such as the patriarch, the matriarch. But the main XP objective is to kill stalkers because they're mostly cloaked. And also medic gives you XP for healing teammates as well. So each King Floor 2 perk will have its XP objectives which help you to gain more XP. Tip number two, parrying with a melee weapon will save your life. I can't stress this enough how much a parry would actually help save you. Each perk on King Floor 2 has a knife, so if you're not playing as the Berserker you can still get your knife out and still parry. It still works the same as a Berserker melee weapon. Parrying with a melee weapon in Killing Floor 2 will not only block the incoming attack but it will also reduce the amount of damage that you take, whereas if you don't parry you will end up taking a lot of damage. Parrying in Killing Floor 2 is not the easiest thing, it does take a lot of practice, it's all about timing and learning Zed behaviour. If you know exactly when the Zed is going to strike you, then you can parry it a lot easier. It saved my life a lot of times in Killing Floor 2, it's helped me get out of bad situations and so I'm confident that it should help you get out of any bad situation. Tip number three, using your weapons alt fire mode. I see quite a few people just using the main fire mode which is alright and all but some weapons actually have an alt fire mode. Some of them aren't really that good because they just change it from like full auto to semi-automatic which isn't useful at all. But weapons like the M16, M208 for example for Commando, you can actually fire explosives at enemies which helps a lot. In case you've never used the M16, basically the main fire mode is bullets and then you've got like a grenade launcher as like a secondary. This helps greatly against flesh pounds, this helps to clear them up if you're a Commando. The M16 isn't the only weapon with an alt fire mode, other weapons have this as well. The medic weapons actually have an alt fire mode which allows you to fire darts which is another way to heal teammates so most of the weapons in King Floor 2 will have an alt fire mode not all of them though tip number four you can actually reduce the time you need to take a syringe so as you know in King Floor 2 you can take a syringe which helps increase your health if you get hit a lot but most people don't know you can actually reduce the time you need to take one so when some people take a syringe they will wait until the animation goes fully to the end but you can actually skip some of the animation if you wait for your character to inject it and then switch to your knife it will actually skip the last part of the animation I meaning you can get back into the fight a lot quicker you don't have to wait for the animation to play through to the end perks like commando have a fallback skill which allows you to heal a lot quicker by changing to your syringe or your knife, that way you can heal a lot quicker, get back into the fight. SWAT also has this feature, but I can't remember what the skill is called. Tip number five, take note of where armor and ammo spawn on the map. Ammo and armor will despawn or spawn each wave, so just make a mental note of where they are. If you notice a piece of armor lying on the ground, I would recommend you wait until the end of the match to take it. If you find a piece of ammo on the ground, I would probably wait until you're low on ammo. I see some people just instantly run for it when they've got like loads of ammo already. And it's just a waste, to be honest. 
if you wait a little bit until your ammo goes down and then take the ammo box that way you have more ammo whereas if you only fired one bullet it's going to be a bit of a waste tip number six again is just make a mental note of how many flesh pounds and zeds are left that way you can manage your ammo to suit any Z. so for example if you use all of your rpg ammo on smaller zeds and you end up seeing a larger flesh pound then you're going to be kind of screwed because you don't have any any ammo left and it's just gonna be a sticky situation whereas if you save your ammo you can at least deal with the flesh pound if he does decide to turn up tip number seven you can kill scrakes with explosives at short range for those of you who play a lot of killing floor 2 you may know that the scrake is actually explosive resistant unlike a flesh pound the scrake will not explode easily so what i like to do is i like to shoot the scrake with an unexploded shot from an rpg or any explosive projectile i Ideally aim for the head on the scrake, if not you can do some body shots but it's more efficient if you shoot for the head. My choice of weapon is the RPG because it can one hit kill a scrake to the head. Tip number 8, some perks have a night vision mode which you can use to see in the dark. Most people actually don't know about this feature because nobody uses it, but you can actually enable a night vision mode for your berserker. And it's actually quite good, although it's a shame that nobody really uses this feature. If Killing Floor 2 had a more in-depth tutorial, I think more people would know about this feature, but for those of you who don't know, you can actually use a night vision mode for berserker. It's not available on every single perk, it's only really available on berserker and a few others. Well next time you use the Berserker skill just keep in mind that there is a night vision mode that you can use. Tip number 9, carry a medic pistol for all of the perks so you can heal teammates. The medic pistol is available on every single perk no matter if you're a berserker or if you're a gunslinger. The medic pistol is really lightweight, weighing at around one block of weight. It also costs 200 dosh, which means it's extremely cheap. You don't need to upgrade it either, you don't really need very much ammo. I only use the medic pistol for the darts to heal teammates, and due to the weight of the weapon, you can take it with any perk, as long as you don't fully upgrade your weapons, which means you're going to end up using up all your space. But if you find yourself up upgrading all your weapons and you still got some spare space left then do take a medic pistol it will help your teammate greatly and if you've only got one medic on your team then it does help him as he doesn't have to keep running around trying to heal everybody you'll help your medic greatly if you carry a medic pistol even if you're not a medic yourself you can still heal teammates Moving on to tip number 10, and this one is quite an obvious one. Always reload when there's no Zeds nearby, even if you've only used like one bullet or half a magazine. If you end up finding yourself getting stuck in a bad situation, you can at least get out of it if you reload beforehand. Whereas if you don't, you're going to end up finding yourself having to reload once you've got loads of Zeds on you. So it's better to reload just in case you do end up finding yourself getting stuck. It just saves a lot of time, a lot of hassle. Tip number 11, running with your knife is much quicker than running with a gun. If you've got an RPG-7 for example, you're going to be moving a lot slower, whereas if you've got a knife, you move a lot quicker. In Killing Floor 1, this was always the case, but in Killing Floor 2, not it's not so much really. You can still move and outrun Zeds with a gun, but if you want to move a lot quicker, then I would recommend that you use a knife. Some perks such as Gunslinger and Berserker allow you to run pretty quick anyway so you don't really need a knife to be honest but for slow moving perks I would recommend that you use a knife to run that way you have a better chance of outrunning any Z. Tip number 12, before leaving a multiplayer game always drop your weapons, your dosh just so then the new players who join the server can buy their weapons, get what they need. You can drop your weapons and they can sell them if they want to, or if they're the same perk as you, then they, you can pass the weapons on to them without them having to buy the weapon. You don't actually have to do this if you don't want to, but at the end of the day, you're being a good team player by providing your money and weapons for other players. Although most of them probably won't say thanks to you, you at least help them in some way or another. Tip number 13. 13 splitting up from other players in multiplayer is a certain death 
I really wouldn't recommend that you split away from your teammates. Even if they are at level 1 and pretty bad, I would still stick with them. Also, the more players, the more Zeds as well, and also more health. So it's better to just stick with teammates, that way you have more chance to survive. Because if you end up splitting up alone, you're going to get stuck easily, no one's going to be there to help you, and you're just going to die, really. Tip number 14, when joining multiplayer games, use the perks that aren't in use. For example, if you join a multiplayer game and you find that no one's really playing as a berserker, go as berserker. Okay. Or if you find that no one's using the medic perk, go as a medic. The medic is the most important perk in multiplayer, so if you find no one's playing that, then do go with that. It will help your team to survive a lot better. Also, another thing I want to add as well, if you join a multiplayer lobby and find that everybody has trash clearing perk, then go for a heavy hitting perk like a demolitionist or a sharpshooter. That way you can balance out the game. Even if you're level 1 with no experience, it's better than nothing. It helps the team to survive in the end. Tip number 15, bashing Zeds actually stumble them back. If you press V on your keyboard, it actually hits the Zed, knocking them back. This helps you to get out of any bad situation if you end up getting stuck. Sometimes if you bash the Zed in the head, it will actually instantly kill them. Sometimes it doesn't though but sometimes you can one hit kill Zeds with them. I see so many people not using this in multiplayer games and it's honestly so useful. It's helped me get out of many situations. Of course, if you've got a Flesh Pound or any larger Zed, that might be a little bit more difficult, but with smaller Zeds, this will definitely work. Tip number 16, always stay near the trader or be aware of how far away you are from the trader. If you're under 100 meters, I wouldn't really bother because you're still going to get there either way. But if you're really far away, like over 150 meters, then do make sure you get close to the trader before you kill the last Zed. That way you can get there in time to buy all your weapons, your upgrades before the trader closes. Because once the trader closes, you're screwed basically, unless you've got all of your stuff. The trader will not open mid-round, so I'm afraid you're going to have to survive with what you got if you didn't make it to the trader. Tip number 17, I would recommend that you adjust your field of view. That way you can see more more Zeds on your screen at once, you're less likely to get surrounded by Zeds or caught as you can see where everybody is on the map. When adjusting your field of view you don't need to put it all the way up to the max, I have mine about half at 115% and it still works for me, I can still see everybody. So you don't really need to go overkill, but if that's what you prefer, then fine, you can go with that. Tip number 18, some weapons can be used by more than one perk. For example, the 301 shotgun can be used for the medic and the support. So if you find a weapon that you really like, but you don't have the right perk for it, then you can always use it on your perk. However, not all weapons are cross-compatible. Some weapons suit a perk only. So not all of the weapons are going to be usable across multiple perks but if you're a survivalist then i suppose you can take anything but if you're a perk other than the survivalist then some weapons will still work depending on what they are but not all of them are going to be very efficient in some perks tip number 19 this is a simple one but please make sure you check the ping before joining a server the higher the ping the more unplayable and more unfair the game is going to be because you're not really going to stand a chance against zeds with like 500 ping i would recommend a ping of about 40 or lower anywhere between 40 and 80 is fine but when it starts to get into the triple digits i just wouldn't bother with that server no matter how good it looks because it's just going to be unfair on you you can't really do anything because the server region is terrible and there's nothing you can really do to bring that ping down and finally tip number 20 Switching to your secondary weapon is always faster than reloading. I'm sure you've heard that phrase multiple times, but this phrase actually helps a lot in Killing Floor 2. I see so many people in multiplayer games just fire at a flesh pound and then reload. Whereas if you've got a secondary weapon, you can deal with the flesh pound a lot quicker. It's especially useful if you have an enraged flesh pound on your arse, because you do want to kill them as quick as possible. So standing there reloading whilst you've got a flesh pound charging at you is not exactly going to be the best idea. So switching to a secondary weapon is definitely going to be very useful. But anyway, this is where I'm going to end the video here. That was 20 tips and tricks for Killing Floor 2. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I also have a Discord if you want to check that out. But this is it for me. I hope you have a great rest of your day. 
and I'll see you next time.